Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Dohid, and I'm here once again with an outstanding topic as usual, how to formulate a research question. How to formulate a research question? This is one of the most commonly asked questions, in my opinion, in my career. And it is also one of the most difficult questions considered by many. That's why I decided to create this video. But before I begin, I will discuss what is a research question, why research question is formulated, and how do we formulate a research question? So let's begin. So what is a research question? A research question is actually a guidance system, like a navigation system, like GPS, global positioning system of a car. When you sit in a car and you plan to go to somebody's home and you have not gone to that place before, but you know the address, verbally so what do you do you type the address and then enter and the gps takes you to that direction and you don't get lost you eventually reach your destination as long as the gps is on this is exactly what a research question is this is exactly what it does it keeps you on track it keeps you from getting lost if you have a research question you know where you are heading what your project is all about. What are you trying to accomplish? What is your goal? In what direction you are moving? You get clarity. If you don't have research question, you will be lost like a ship without a rudder. You will not know where you are heading. You will be confused and eventually your research project will be destroyed because you don't know where you're heading. That's why research question serves as a navigation system. Now, why do we need this navigation system? Why do we need this research question? Research question is needed because we need to develop an inclusion exclusion criteria for our research it is a custom and culture that we need to explain what our inclusion exclusion criteria is it doesn't matter what kind of design we are using if it's a systematic review meta-analysis or if it's a clinical trial we will have some inclusion exclusion criteria for the study that inclusion exclusion criteria is highly dependent upon your research question so if you have a research question ready you can easily create your inclusion exclusion criteria now the second reason why you need research question it will help you in creating a correct search strategy if you are writing a systematic review or meta-analysis then you need correct an accurate search strategy your research question will help you keep you on track the third reason we need research question is that it will help us in collecting the right data because we know what we are doing right so it will help us in collecting the right data that's why we have research question now i'm coming to most difficult topic for many how do we write or how do we formulate a research question so let's begin the first thing first for a research question is you need to decide that you have a research project you want to do a research study and you need to have a research question now the second thing is how do you do it you need to think yes research is one of those subjects that teaches you how to think and in my opinion no other subject teaches you to think the way research does and that's what a researcher does right he keeps on thinking so research teaches you how to think so if you are formulating a research question how do you begin you begin by thinking so take a piece of paper and think start thinking about the ideas what are the ideas you have about your research project keep writing keep writing and always think on paper once you have an idea, you have a plan written. Now do some brainstorming with other group members, with other fellow colleagues, fellow scientists, and see if there is anything that they can bring to the table. Once you have done the brainstorming, now you are all set. But there's one thing you need to also do. You need to decide your study design. What kind of study will you conduct? Will it be an animal study? Will, will it be an in vitro study? Will it be a case study? Will it be case series? Will it be a cross-sectional study, case control? or cohort study, retrospective cohort, prospective cohort, or will it be a clinical trial, randomized control trial, or a systematic review or meta-analysis? That's what you need to decide. Once you have decided it, now you decide what kind of research question you will use. Yes, there are different kinds of research questions. And I will discuss this topic in one of the future videos, but I will just briefly give a highlight on the types of research questions. The research question could be of incidence type that you're looking at the incidence or prevalence type. It could be therapy research question. It could be harm study. Yes, it could be a harm study question. It could be prevention study question or it could be diagnostic accuracy question so these are some different types of research questions once you have decided what will be your study design you have identified your type of study question now the next thing is you start formulating your research question so what are the components of a research question remember p i c 
O, Pico. I like to call it Pico. Some people call it Pico. Some people will just call it P-I-C-O. It doesn't matter. Just remember the P-I-C-O format and I call it Pico. If you want to call it Pico, that's wonderful. If not, that's wonderful as well. So Pico question, what are these P-I-C-O? Remember P for population problem or patient. I for intervention. C for control group or comparison. And O for outcome. These are the usual components of a research question. Now, there is another kind of research question and that is PECO, P-E-C-O. In that, we have population. E for not intervention now, E for exposure, and C for comparison or control group, and O for outcome. Now, this is the usual common or the most common way of formulating a research question. However, is PICO a complete research question? No. Some people also believe that you should have PICO TT or PICO ST. Yes, there are some small T's, PICO and two T's or ST. So what are those two T's? T for time, that means follow up time and the T, the other T is type of study, or you can just call it S. So you have ST. So PICO ST, PICO TS, PICO TT, all of them are the same thing. And these TT, the type of study and the time, they are optional. This ST or TT or TS, they are optional. You don't have to have them. If you want to do that, that's wonderful. But remember, the more components of a research question you will have, the difficult the data search will be. It's good for a clinical trial if you have all of them together but for a review article systematic review you can rely on just four but if you add tt in a systematic review then it will be very difficult for you to find this much of data because remember research question is easily understood if we consider it in this way that the broader the question the study design will be traditional review and then systematic review and the narrower the question it will be a clinical trial so if you remember this triangle that the broader the question the study design will be traditional review if the question is not that broad but not too narrow that means you have just four components pico then it is systematic review or meta-analysis but if it's very very narrow and has all six components then highly likely it will be a clinical trial or empirical study you will have to do a, an empirical study so now with this triangle you will remember that if my study design is traditional review i just need three or two of those pico components for a traditional or narrative review but if i'm doing a systematic review i need all four if i'm doing a clinical trial i need all six possibly or five and four for sure so this will help you understand the concept now let's begin and discuss this that this pico question does it apply to all kinds of studies so what are the possible kinds of studies you have seen the study design pyramid before this is how it looks like study design pyramid now what do we see on the top we see meta-analysis and systematic review on the top. Then comes the clinical trials, randomized and non-randomized control trial. Then comes the observational studies, cohort studies, case control studies, and the cross-sectional studies. And then the case study and case series, and then the ideas, opinions, editorials, and then comes the animal studies, and the last is the in vitro studies. So these are the possible kinds of research papers or research studies. So let's see if PICO question is applicable to all of them. Let's start from the bottom. In vitro study, can we have all four components of PICO we have a population possibly yes maybe we have collected some sample from population do we have people yes they can be people if not we can just have a problem so yes pico p is relevant how about intervention if it's an in vitro research maybe we are giving some intervention so yes there could be an intervention can there be a control group yes there can be a control group you can compare it with something else you can have a comparison group or control group and then the outcome yes you are looking for an outcome so yes pico question is valid for in vitro studies now let's go to the animal studies. Is it relevant for animal studies? So let's look at it. P, population problem or people. So we don't have people, but we have population. Animal population could be any animals. Or we can have a problem. Can we have the eye of intervention? Yes, in animal studies, we do proper experiments. So yes, we have an intervention. Do we have control or comparison group? Yes, we do. Do we have an outcome? Yes, we do. So yes, it is relevant for animal studies as well. Now, the ideas, opinions, editorials depend on the topic. You don't need research questions for, for them. You just need a broad topic in general. So yes, you don't need that for these studies. But now, the case studies and case series. Do we need PICO question? We have a population. Yes. Do we have an intervention? The intervention was done before because case study and case series is actually an observational study. You did not do any, any intervention, but you can select the patients on the basis of an intervention that was done before. So yes, intervention is relevant. How about a control group? Do we have a control group? No, we don't have a control group in case study. We have only one or four people in case study and four plus if it's a case series. And case series is known for being a study in which there is no control group. So yes, control group is not relevant for case studies and case series. Maybe in a case study you can, but in case series you don't need control group or comparison group. 
Wine case study, if you are studying two patients, maybe you can compare them with each other. So yes, you do have control or you do have comparison at least, not the control. And then the outcome, yes, you're looking at the outcome. So yes, it is relevant. Now let's check the observational studies, the other three. Cross-sectional study, we have population problem or people. Yes, we do. Do we have the intervention? Possibly they had an intervention before, just like in a case study. So yes, it can be there. What about the control group or comparison? Can we have a comparison? Yes, we can. Yes, yes. I know many people will say, what is he talking about? How can there be a control group or comparison group in a cross-sectional study? Trust me, there are studies in which we do. And then the next thing is outcome. Do we need an outcome? Yes. If we are studying prevalence, let's say we are stu studying the effects of smoking or we are studying how many people who smoke develop lung cancer in this population. So we have people who smoke that can be an exposure. So not an intervention here, maybe exposure. And then then, so that means it becomes PECO, P-E-C-O. And then the comparison versus those people who do not smoke. And then the outcome, the prevalence, how many people of lung cancer exist or does lung cancer exist in smokers? So we can have so many parts of this PECO question. We have people, we have exposure, or we have an intervention that was given to them before the study begun. And then we have a control group and then we have an outcome. So yes, PECO question is relevant. Let's move to the case control. Do we have all four? Yes, we can have all four. But here, ideally, it's E, exposure. So PECO, PECO question. Now, what about the cohort studies? Yes, again, PECO. We have an exposure in cohort studies, right? Remember, if you don't remember, go and watch my video on cross-sectional studies, case control, and cohort studies, and observational studies to revise everything. Now, PECO question is relevant for cohort studies. What about the clinical trials? We don't have PECO, but we have PECO because we here we have intervention. So yes, PECO question here. Now, what about systematic review? It depends. If it's a mixed systematic review, then PECO, PICO, both will be used. But if you have study design that is confined only to clinical trial systematic review, then PICO. If it's only observational studies in a systematic review, then PECO. But if it's a mixed study design, then some of the studies will have exposure and some of the studies will have intervention. So you can say P, I slash E, C, O, PICO or PECO. So this is how we understand what research question is all about. So whenever you are conducting any of these studies, make a research question, formulate a research question according to this video. Now watch this video again. And if you have any question, comment below. Keep learning. Keep watching. Thank you.